Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Rob, AKA The Diligent Dev, and in this tutorial, we're gonna be building a to-do list in record time using Vue, Viewfire, and Firebase. So let's jump over to the computer and get right into it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to need to do is go to firebase.google.com. If you don't already have an account, go ahead and sign up for one. If you do, go to your console. We're gonna create a new project. We're gonna call this view fire to do and hit continue. We're not going to enable Google Analytics for this project. You can if you want. And then it's gonna go ahead and create our project. And once that's finished, I will be right back. And now that our project's been created, all we have to do is hit continue. And then we'll go right over here in the left-hand menu to database. And up at the top here, we'll click create database. We will start it in test mode. If you're not familiar with Firestore rules, go ahead and familiarize yourself with those because before you'd ever push anything to production, you're gonna wanna make sure that you set up some Firestore rules because as we're setting it up right now, anybody can read and write to this database and that is a huge security liability. But we're just gonna click next. We'll pick US Central here and hit done, and then it's gonna go ahead and provision our Cloud Firestore. And now that our database has been provisioned, let's go ahead and install the Vue CLI. Now, normally I wouldn't do this. I'd usually create a Vue project with NPX, but it is much easier to install Vueify if you have the Vue CLI. So we're gonna open up a terminal, and we're gonna run the following command, npm i-g at Vue slash CLI. And once this is done, I will be right back. And now that the Vue CLI has been installed globally on our machines, we can create Vue projects. So to do so, I'm gonna CD into my desktop directory, and I'm gonna run the following command, Vue create Vue-fire-to-do. And then we're gonna choose default. And once this is done, I will be right back. Now that our project's been created, we can CD into it. CD Vue Fire-to-do. And then we're gonna run the following command to add Vutify. We'll say view, add, Vutify, and hit enter. We'll choose the default preset, so we'll just hit enter. And then this is gonna take a while, and I will be back as soon as it is finished. And now that our project is created and we've added Vutify, let's go ahead and open it in Visual Studio Code. So I'll open code, go to file, open, go find it on my desktop, and open the root folder. Next, we're gonna install some dependencies. So we're gonna go up to the terminal, click new terminal, and then we're gonna run the following command, npm install viewfire firebase and hit enter. And once this is done installing, I will be right back. Now that our dependencies have installed, I'm gonna to go to source. I'm gonna create a new folder and call it firebase. Then I'm gonna create a file inside of this folder and I'm gonna call it db.js. At the top of this file, I'm gonna import Firebase from Firebase. Then I'm also gonna import, and wrap this in quotes, Firebase slash Firestore. The next thing we're gonna to need to do is head back over to Firebase. We're gonna to need to go to Project Overview. And then at the top here, we're gonna click this web icon we're just gonna name this view fire to do for our nickname and we'll register the app. The next thing we're gonna do is copy everything inside of this scripts tag. And then we're gonna head back over to our project and paste it in. And then right before our Firebase initialize app, we're gonna say export const db equal to and then on the end of this, we're gonna say dot firestore. Then I'll go ahead and save everything. Next, we'll head to our main.js file. At the top here, we will import firestore plugin from viewfire. And then below that, we'll say view.use Firestore plugin, and we'll save that. The next thing we're gonna do is launch a development server so we can see our changes on the screen in real time. So to do that, we'll go to terminal, new terminal, and we're gonna run npm run serve. 
And now that our development server is up, I'm going to pin this to this side of the screen, open up a new browser tab, pin it to the other side of the screen, and then copy this and paste it into the browser. And you'll see we have our boilerplate, Viewify, and View application. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit smaller, make this a little bit bigger, and then we'll head over to our app.view file, and we're going to do a little cleanup here. We'll get rid of these two V images and replace it with an H2 that just says view fire to do. We will also get rid of this V button right here. We'll delete this hello world out of here and here and out of the components. I'll alt shift F to format and then I'll save that. And you'll see that we have a blank screen here with our app bar. The next thing we're gonna do is head over to our components folder. We're gonna go ahead and just delete this hello world component out of here. Then we're gonna create a new file in our components directory and call it to-do list dot view. Inside of it, we'll put our template tag and our script tag. Inside of our template tag, we'll create a div and give it a class of PT-3 to give it some padding top. And for now, we're just gonna put a placeholder in here. Call it, let's do an H1 and say to do list. Go ahead and save that. And then we're gonna head back over to our app.view file to import to do list from dot slash components slash to do list dot view. We'll go ahead and copy our imports, register it as a component, and then inside of our V content, we're gonna go ahead and put this in here. And go ahead and save everything. And now we see our component on the screen. So let's head back to our to-do list.view file, get rid of this header. And then in here, we're gonna create a V row. We're going to give it a class of deflex and justify dash center. We're gonna do a V call. And inside of here, we're gonna do a V text field. We're gonna give it a label of new to do. It's gonna be an outlined field. We'll give it a V model of new item. We're gonna to bind to the key up property and do dot enter to make it so it only registers on the enter key key up. And we're gonna say add item. Gonna hit Alt Shift F to format and go ahead and save this. And now we see we have our text box, but it is full screen and I don't want it to be full screen. So we're gonna go up to our column and we'll say calls six and save. And now you'll see that the text box looks a little bit better on the screen. Then beside our text box, we'll do another V call. We'll give it calls one. And inside of this, we'll do a V BTN for V button. We'll give it some text of add. On the button itself, we'll make it a large button. We'll give it a color equal to primary. And we'll bind to the click event and also do add item. Go ahead and save this. And we see now we have a button to the right of our text box. Next underneath our view row, we're gonna add a transition dash group and give it a name of fade. And what this will do is when items are added and deleted to the list, they will fade in and out on the screen. Then inside of this transition group, we're gonna do a V card. We're gonna give it a class of MX dash auto PA dash three MA dash two and text center. We're also gonna give it a max width of 400. And we're gonna say V 
for to do in to do's and give it a key of to do dot ID. Inside, we're going to have a V row with two V calls. The first V call will have a calls property and we'll set that equal to eights. And the next one will have a, another calls property and we'll set that to four. Inside of this first one, we'll have a V list item title with a class of headline and MB1. Inside of that, we'll do some text interpolation and say to do dot name. Then inside of this V call, we're going to give it a V button, give it an icon property because it's going to be an icon button. We'll give it the color of red and we'll bind to the click event and set it equal to delete to do. And we will pass it the to do dot ID. Then inside of our V button, let's go ahead and specify our icon. So we're going to say V icon and MDI dash delete. We'll go ahead and save all this. And then we're going to head down to our script tag. And at the top of the script tag, we're going to import DB from dot dot slash Firebase slash DB. Inside of our export defaults, we'll create a data property and we'll return to do's and set that equal to an empty array and then new item and set that equal to a blank string. Underneath our data prop, we'll create a methods property and inside of our methods property, we will have an add item method and this will be async and we'll say if new item db.collection, we'll reference the to do's collection. And then we'll say add and we'll pass in an object with a property of name and set that equal to this dot new item. And I just realized up above, I have to set this to this dot new item. And then once that has added successfully, we will clear out the text box by saying this dot new item equals a blank string. And right before this DB, we have to await this. So it won't clear out the text box until the item is actually added to our collection. Down below, we'll add another method and we'll call this delete to do and pass it the ID. And let me make sure that I have these right. So delete to do is our method. We're calling on the click of the delete button and add item. So we do have these correct down here below. So we have the delete to do and in order to delete it to do, we'll say DB dot collection. We'll reference the to do's collection. We'll grab the document based on the ID that we pass in and then we'll say delete. And then underneath our methods, we'll set up our view fire property. It's called Firestore, And we'll set a property inside of this called to do's and set it equal to db.collection to do. And I'm actually going to call this collection to do's. We'll go ahead and save this. We'll test out our form here by saying like wash car. We'll hit add and you'll see now we have our wash car, but it does not look great as it stands right now. I'm going to test out the delete functionality and it looks like that is working as well. So let's work on getting our card to look correctly. So we'll add another to do. We'll just add wash car back into it and we'll come up here to the top on our V row inside of the card. We'll give it a class of D dash flex and then justify space around hit save. And now we're seeing that our card is looking much better. 
And to show you the real-time capabilities that Viewfire gives us right out of the box without any setup, I've opened up our Viewfire project in Firebase, gone to our database, and I'm inside of the to-dos collection. I'm gonna add a document, give it a field of name, and say walk dog. Go ahead and save it, and you'll see that it updates in real time on our screen. We can delete it out of here. And then if we also go in and delete this document, it will delete out of our project in real time. So that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up for this tutorial. If you got any value out of this, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like and subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this video, go ahead and drop a line in the comment section below. And until next time, happy coding.